so thank you so much for being here. Uh, now we are going, yeah, we are going to talk about security. Um, security is maybe the most important topics uh, in this space. Uh, why? Because without security, there is no trust, and without trust, there is no users, and without uh, any users, you don't have a market, and so we have nothing. So I'm very pleased to, to have you uh, fourth. It's a, it's a big panel, but it's perfect. So Charles Guimet from uh, Ledger, CTO, Yaniv, and also Guillaume, and thank you so much, um, Clarisse, to, to being um, here. Um, I would like to, to start by, um, I mean, two days ago, we organized uh, the Big Whale Awards, and we reward um, Ledger as the best European project of the year because you're working on security. And uh, when Ariel from Ledger um, received uh, the award, she explained that uh, security is a nightmare and that every year you have to work harder to uh, secure our crypto assets. And so, Charles, my question is simple. Um, can you sleep? <laughs> um, frankly, I sleep, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I agree that uh, security is, is a big challenge for uh, our market, for our ecosystem. Uh, especially when you look back, there are plenty of uh, story of hacks, phishing, and so on. And I think everything starts with uh, self-custody. Like Self-custody is really paramount uh, in our ecosystem. And 2022 was uh, witnessing about, about that with FTX, with Celsius, with all of that. I think the first security is, is to be your uh, own owner, to be your, your own bank, and your valuables are yours if you are in self-custody. I think this is the first item which is, which is really important, not your keys, not your coin, not your NFT. Uh, this is something important to, uh, to recall. And then there is uh, the security, it, security itself, and then it's very related to uh, the wallet. Uh, your wallet is in charge of uh, managing your crypto, but the security aspect is really important. And there are different aspects. The first one is very technical, like where do you generate your keys? Uh, are you sure they are, they are in the secure enclave? Making sure that they never leave the enclave, like uh, implementing the cryptography inside this, this enclave is something important. So this is about like managing the key and uh, implementing it in a, in a imp implementing the cryptography in a secure area. But this is also about using your uh, crypto. And whenever you uh, sign a transaction, you will consent for something. You will consent for signing something. And being able to understand what you are about to consent is something very, very important. That's why we have our devices with a secure display, so you can verify what you are about to consent. And we have introduced the notion of clear signing, understanding really what you, what you are about to consent, to consent. OK, OK. And do you think that there is, I mean, a better way to securize uh, your crypto assets? I mean, you mentioned uh, hard hardware wallets. Clarisse, for instance, uh, I mean, what's your point on this uh, question? So I believe it's token holders, NFT holders, investors, they are investors, they are not security experts. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, by the way, so bear with me. Um, that means that even the actually most proficient um, software engineers, I don't know if you've uh, read the news uh, in January this year, Luke Dasher, who was actually one of the core Bitcoin developer since 2011, he has over 30 years of experience as a software engineer, well, in January 2023 this year, his keys got compromised and he lost $3 million. So when investors are protecting investors, they're only protecting themselves. When a developer is protecting his, ha his app, his app, the platform is building, he can protect millions of users, millions, millions of NFT uh, uh, holders, token holders. And I think it's very important to, to, to have that in mind. I think we all here believers that we're building a technology that's aimed at mass adoption. And it's very difficult to think mass adoption if you give people the responsibility or the sole option to have the responsibility of managing their private key. It's actually very, very risky. So if we 
if we take a step back and think about that, when I hear developers coming to us and say, all right, so what is the wallet infrastructure you can provide us? Usually they come to me saying, I want the perfect trade-off between security and UX. And usually the underlying means, let's compromise on security to have a great UX. We, there's a piece that has been released today uh, by Coindesk that shows that magic links have a uh, subject to uh, uh, zero day vulnerability, which means that there's been findings that you can have all account takeover using magic link. Doesn't mean that everybody is actually uh, uh, affected by that. It depends on the implementation of not only Web3 company, but also Web2 companies. It's broader than Web3, right? But think about it once again. If your bank account were telling you to use a magic link, which is basically a passwordless authentication to connect to this bank, you would pause a second and think, oh, that doesn't seem that secure, right? So there are immediate consequences that goes with having good UX. You gain millions of users, but there can be horrible consequences with getting hacked or getting compromised with this type of solutions that are easy solution to integrate, which can, which can lead to actually decades of brand damage to rebuild. And those are things that you, I think people should think about. So when you tell me about technology, obviously, you know, MPC, multi-party computation, is a very good technology, threshold signature. So we see that now there's a lot of wallets that adopt this technology. Zengo is one of them. Fireblocks is one of them. We love Regitat. But I'm also on the board of the MPC Alliance, and we've seen for the past two years a lot of people using MPC to enable security at the hot wallet level, right? So it's for hot wallet management to provide hot wallet infrastructure. And that's one good side. But there's also a lot of innovation, and we believe this is just the beginning. And we've seen, for instance, uh, open source protocol like WebOfn enabling actually us to have a user creating a wallet with just a biometric, just, you know, you scan your face, you have a wallet, you scan your face, you sign, and that leaves a cryptographic proof. That's what we call the signing power, because we also agree with Ledger that you should be yeah. in charge of your wallet. You should only be able to actually move your phone, and that gives us a cryptographic proof that is on your side, lives on your device, and only enable any user to actually move their account. So my short answer is that, my long answer, short. <laughs> is that there's a lot of technology out there and, and, and project building very good infrastructure that will enable blockchain mass adoption and mostly enable people to not have to manage their private key alone. Thank you very much. And just Guillaume and Yaniv, so do you think that it could be possible to be in self-custody, I mean, for everybody? And just one question, who has a hardware wallet in the room? Raise your hands. Okay, so it's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so do you think that yeah, it could be possible for everybody to manage their keys, the seed phrase, and also their hardware wallet? Um, first, thanks for hosting me. I think it's the most beautiful panel I've ever been to with the Welcome of Paris. Apple. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so I think that I think many of the people out there can't manage their passwords. It's really hard to manage passwords or so think managing your own uh, seed phrase. And it is problematic. And I think that now uh, most of the community is more tech savvy and they know how to do that. But still you have, and I'm sure MetaMask is hearing it all the time, like you have so many people that are trying to retrieve their seed phrase because they lost it, right? Um, and I think that um, we still have a long way to go for the next billion users to, um, to come. I think that account obstruction will help in this, uh, in this process. I know Ledger um, is doing things there. Um, and in some point in time, of course, you need to have your own keys in crypto. Like this is the promise of, of blockchain, right? Um, you just need to have proper technologies. Uh, you need to, and we talked about it uh, when we went to the panel, you need to bake in both UX and security. It is possible. It is very hard to do. Uh, luckily, we have here, like, amazing, uh, amazing companies. How you find the right balance between security and UX? Um, so I think, again, it is things that need to be baked in together. So 
when you have proper uh, security in place, I think it will improve user experience because think today user and like you just touched on the like user are signing transaction they don't know what they are signing right in order to know what you are signing you need to have the proper security the proper way to get full visibility into each and every transaction and this is part of the security it is now you just need to do that and in plain english or in plain french or any other language in the world to explain users what they are signing next step is you know now when you are swiping your card you don't know that in the back end you have so many risk analysis uh, happening, and you can just sign your um, sign any transaction with confidence. And if anything will happen, you are insured, right? So same th same thing will happen in crypto. Um, I hope it will happen in the next two to three years, but it can happen. It's a matter of uh, years, decades, uh, Guillaume. No, I, d I don't think it's going to be in years. I think there are already some attempts, and uh, our friends from Ledger have tried already well, the concept of what we call uh, account abstraction. So very soon, with uh, this uh, concept of uh, account abstraction, you will be able to uh, manage your, uh, your account through a smart contract, not directly with what we call the EUA, uh, Ethereum uh, External Account, but directly, so your account will be directly um, managed by a smart contract. So that will uh, give you uh, the possibility not to sign anymore with the EU A, uh, e -O -A <laughs> indeed, yeah, that's it. but uh, directly from the smart contract. And that's going to change uh, everything. There's already some attempts in the market. Uh, it's still uh, early stage, but I would say the from next year it's going to be uh, it's going to be full in production. But. Talking about democratization, um, I mean, how to, once again, to find the right balance between the security that we all want and also the UX, because with all the respect for MetaMask and other uh, projects, it's not, I mean, easy for my friends that they are not in the crypto space. And so how to, to find this right balance? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. And... Definitely, I think both are important. You can you cannot only think about UX. If you think only about UX, you end up with a, a full software wallet, which is uh, quite easy to compromise. If you only think about security, you end up with a product which cannot be used and you don't solve any any problem. So this is a, this is a good trade-off to 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 find. And I think we we need to think uh, like as an adversarial, uh, as an attacker. And f as an attacker, it's always a, a, a question of uh, cost opportunity. Like, uh, how much does, does it cost to break your wallet, and what will I uh, get back? This this is the big question. If you have one million on your software uh, uh, wallet on your on your on your phone. Like it, it costs really, really less uh, to break your device, so it's not, it's not a good trade-off. So it's always you always need to think like this. I, if you want to uh, simply secure ten dollars uh, in in your in your phone and you want a very nice UX because you want to pay with Lightning and so on, I think it's okay to to leave this ten dollars in your in your in your device in your software wallet because you if you lose them, it's not that uh, uh, that that big. So it could be like uh, today the bank account and also our wallet. So we have 100 euros in the pocket, and all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But at some point, if you need to secure something which is really very valuable for you, uh, whether this is this is a f this is a money or uh, um, an NFT which is very important for you because you have an emotional link to this NFT, maybe it does not worth a million, but it's very valuable for you. In those cases, you will need something very secure. Yeah. And how we should protect uh, something like a board ape, for example? Um, I, I think the minimal the minimum is is to have a, a hardware wallet to do to do to do so, and again you can add a layer of governance. Maybe you can use a multi-sig around, around that with several hardware wallet. Also, account abstraction can also improve this. Uh, what is interesting with account abstraction is that you can mix in your uh, wallet which is on chain, some very hard rules to spend a lot of money or your board apes, and some very um, um, s low rules where you can uh, spend your, your money with, uh, with, with something very less secure. This is the kind of trade-off that can, can be implemented with, uh, with the kind of section. Guillaume? Yeah, if I can add, because I heard that we're talking about the mass market, and Clarice and Charles have been talking about the mass market. Before uh, security, what we need is scalability. So, 
Uh, the first step is to have new layers, uh, new layer two, uh, like we, we do at Consensus, like we have ZKA EVM, which is uh, uh, currently in the, in the test ne network, but it's our colleagues from Polygon and uh, some others are also working on it. And that's going to be the, fir the first step, scalability. And then, uh, as you said, uh, it's going to be the, the security. But the security, I think, depends on the needs of the user. Not everybody has the same needs. So uh, a pension fund uh, doesn't have the same need as a, a single user. Some users are can manage their own private keys, uh, and then. I think we, uh, uh, some users with education, uh, the, well, all of you here already uh, know how to manage your private keys, I, I suppose, but uh, I don't know if you've seen, but MetaMask has just launched uh, MetaMask Learn uh, to educate uh, the, the, the mass market. And then uh, I think there's several ways to uh, avoid uh, the, the hacking, the, the phishing, the scams, and uh, um, if you, again, it depends on the needs of, of the users. Uh, a pension fund will need probably a multi-sig, as you said, uh, uh, to, to access uh, the, the, uh, the wallet. So it really depends on, on the users, I think. Clarice, if you want. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, we're moving from an economy of single investors, single collector, to builders. I mean, today it's builders that are coming to this ecosystem. You're all here because you have a project in mind. You're building an NFT marketplace. You're building a game. You're building or you had a project and you found out that blockchain can enable you to monetize it in a way or to uh, add something for your users, right? So in my view, the shape of the, of the security solutions you need is super important to where you're at in that stage. If you're part of that builder's economy, well, you need the developer tool, right? You need you need something that enables you to scale with your users. And I think this is very important that this industry starts looking at, at the solution that are right, not just for you to be able to uh, turn on crypto, but to build a sustainable business, build scalable business with actually millions of users can be that can be onboarded in your platforms. Okay, and what's the main challenge? Uh, or oh, maybe, uh, Yaniv, you want to react? I don't know. Okay. Now, wh what's the main challenge um, on security? I mean, how to, and, and for companies, not for, uh, I mean, users, uh, for ledger, for defense, also for, uh, uh, of course, uh, consensus uh, with MetaMask? Um, so you ask what is the biggest challenge for companies like us to in security? Yeah, so I think um, one of the biggest challenges is um, is market education. like. I think everyone knows that they need to have security. They just don't know how they should get security. And you see that in many companies, like we sell, uh, our motion is B2B. We sell to, to wallet providers. We sell to NFT marketplaces, to creators, to brands, um, to protocols as well. And you don't see, like in many companies, that they have a CISO or the security processes in hand. Uh, they still struggle to understand where they need to be. Um, so I think this is uh, this is currently the biggest challenge. Like I'm coming from a background of 20 years in cybersecurity, in traditional cybersecurity, and uh, I must say that you know when you meet companies that um, are here for a long time, so they have security processes in place, but the newcomers they still lack it. Um, but again, it is something that I think in the next year or two we'll see we see it more happening more. Uh, and we'll have wide adoption of, of security processes. Guillaume, uh, Charles. Okay, I, I, I take it. Um, yeah, I agree. Like education is key uh, for retail user, definitely, but also for uh, for company. And when you when you are a, a company holding crypto or holding a digital asset, there is something which is which is different from a retail user. The first one is often there is more value, and the second one is you. You, you need some governance uh, in, your, uh, in your organization. You don't want to have someone in your company with a hardware wallet and full control over the asset of the company. This is not something you, you want, of course. So what is important is to have a flexible 
um, layer of governance where you will be able to say, uh, I give access to this account to this specific people. There is this specific process to access to, uh, to this account to make transaction. They will need to gather three approvals out, out of these five people and, and so on. This is, this is something really, really important. And, uh, and by the way, uh, Ledger is very, very known for uh, the hardware wallet, but we also have um, a B2B offering, which is, uh, which is called Ledger Vault, a Ledger Enterprise uh, Service. And we are uh, offering this kind of uh, solution for uh, financial institution. Guillaume and Clarisse. Yeah. Just wanted to remind uh, us that uh, the promise of, um, of blockchain. So uh, the promise is uh, uh, security, privacy, and transparency. And we should not compromise on the very important And also world. decentralization. But that's what I was just, uh, just about to say, actually. That, uh, the, the most important word you said is decentralization, and we should not compromise on decentralization. And the FTX uh, story reminded us that uh, centralized business is probably not good for the end user. So we should not compromise uh, on the on the decentralization. And you were asking about the balance between security and decentralization. And uh, so we should start from with decentralization. And we can build today dApps uh, still uh, implementing some very strong security measure uh, while preserving the, uh, the decentralization. That's the most important. Clarice? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, to build to build on that, actually, uh, um, one of the reasons why I started Defense to start with was because I couldn't understand or wrap my head around the fact that we would all operate on blockchain technology, yet take our private key, centralize it on centralized device with centralized custodian, right? That, to me, was just a big red flag for the next crisis or upcoming crisis. And so, building on decentralization, uh, I believe that there's a way, uh, icon abstraction is one, obviously, uh, to uh, operate private key on a decentralized uh, way, but, or to, sorry, sign and manage basically your assets uh, uh, leveraging decentralized technology. So obviously account abstractions, sm smart, uh, smart contracts, but also we actually operate MPC technology in the decentralized way by leveraging that technology and implementing in different servers that are completely decentralized around the world. We relied on third party provider to actually share the key shares of our clients, so our clients don't need to share them. They just trust a decentralized network, and basically they authenticate via their uh, biometrics in order to access that decentralized custody network. So I totally I am align 100% with you. It doesn't make any sense to think centralized custody. It doesn't make any sense to think centralized exchange. And if you want to operate on centralized exchange, then operate with segregated wallets infrastructure. Don't commingle the funds. I mean, that's uh, obviously basic that is are worth, uh, uh, yeah, re reminding. So in the future, we're we gonna have uh, so several way of securizing our crypto. Uh, not only one way with a hardware wallet, but maybe with. A, you all agree with, with this? I mean, in ten years will be yeah, many uh, many matters of security it's difficult to predict the the, the future uh, but for sure i think different uh, use cases will uh, need different uh, solution uh, today like it's not possible to use your phone to store crypto securely just because phones are not built for security but we can hope that in the near future uh, the phone manufacturer or uh, some some other player will work on having um, a security, like a, a, a high level of security on those devices. Again, the, the question is how do you solve the, this UX uh, versus uh, security challenge? And you need to, to solve those, uh, those two challenges. So yeah, th th there are some hope, I think, uh, around, that, around that. So far, the hardware wallet is the most secure way to do that, just because it's completely um, uh, uh, segregated, isolated from uh, your computer. But tomorrow, th 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 there will be probably other solution. Yaniv. So I believe that we'll this layered approach where it really depends on what do you want to store, what do you want to protect. Um, and for like doing fast transaction, you will do everything with your hot wallet, right? For uh, holding your uh, most valuable things, you will have this uh, cold wallet, hardware wallet. Um, also think that you should partner with maybe Apple to have Ledger inside iPhones. Um, but um, I think 
you have this layer of the key management, right? It's very important. We see many, many progress there, um, also with the kind of abstraction, of course. But managing your key is only one part. You see now people are being lured uh, due to like phishing campaigns or scam project. Everything is good with their keys. They're managing everything correctly. But then in the end, someone is stealing their, uh, their funds, their NFTs. Um, and like you need to do this second layer of security. Um, specifically, like we're seeing it, it is targeting Web3 users. Um, so this is why I believe will happen. OK, thank you very much. Uh, we are at the end of this panel, but uh, thank you. Uh, thank you once again, and uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you.